Welcome to After Hours Engineering, update number one. First, we hit 100 plus subscribers. Yatta! I'm very grateful and humbled, and perhaps one day we may hit an order of magnitude more. But for now, you are most welcome. Let's talk about our next journey. My contract work is taking a little bit longer than expected, no surprise there. Nonetheless, I still find time in the background to do preparatory work for the next series. I've decided to continue with the Softcore FPGAs, and I think we're ready to start the RISC-V architecture, the RISC-V ISA architecture, more specifically the RV32i. That's the simplest of the variants. There are many ways to implement the RISC-V. I will list them in the notes below. There are tons of them, Femto, Pico, you name it. Uh, but they are, can be all summed up into three main categories, single cycle, multi-cycle, and single cycle pipeline. In this series, I'm going, I've chosen the simpler of the three, which is the multi-cycle single core processor. In preparation, I've designed a first draft, and it's a, as a draft, it's in progress, that lays out the current set of instructions, the base instructions that we're going to cover. But it doesn't include the environment and the CR, CSR instructions. We we'll, may fill those out later, but for now, we're just going to stick with the base instruction set. So let's take a look at the diagram. Looking at this diagram, you'll notice that there are several similarities between the A09 and this RISC-V processor. First of all, we have a control matrix. We have a program counter, an instruction register, register file, arithmetic logic unit, and a bunch of multiplexers. What's new to the diagram are these gray boxes here, these registers. These support the intermediate steps between them. They're there specifically to support multi-cycle. If this was a single cycle processor, these gray registers here would not exist. The MDR, AB, JAL, and the ALU out. What is new for the RISC-V in general is this immediate. This does similar things such as sign extensions and instruction extensions. We also have in the program management unit a sign extender. And if we are dealing with BRAM, which we will at the start, this PMMU is nothing more than a pass-through, but it's here for future expansion if we want to change up the BRAM to say flash RAM or an external static RAM chip, which hopefully we'll get around to doing later, much later in the series, perhaps in another one. We also have the reset vector, which acts very similar, but instead of the reset vector going into the instruction register, as it did in the A09, the reset vector will come straight out of memory be, and routed back to the program counter. Now that's it in a nutshell. The diagram is still a work in progress, but for the most part, this is fully functional. Um, I've tested it a little bit by running through it with my eye. Now the design is based off of a book called Computer Organization and Design, RISC-V Second Edition, The Hardware Software Interface by David Patterson and John Hennessy. In that book, they talk about building all three different variants of the processor, but they only go so far as to provide an introduction. It's up to the reader to extend that into a full design for RISC-V processor. And that's what we'll be doing in this series. We will take the multi-cycle design, which only implemented a small, small set of the instructions, and we will further it to include all the instructions for the RV32i. But that is only part of the work. Our processor will need a controller. And as before, we'll implement that as a state machine. And as you've guessed, I've created a first draft of that too. Let's take a look. This is the state diagram for the RV32i for just the base instructions. And it should look somewhat familiar to you, except I've chosen a slightly different style. I have squares that have gray boxes in them that label the state names. And if we look at the top, we can see that the processor starts off in the reset, goes to vector 1, then vector 2, 
and then begins the normal cycle of a processor which is the fetch, decode, and then everything in pink is considered the execution stage. There's a few new things on this diagram. We have the memory ready signal that's being um, checked by say the fetch stage, the I-type load, and the S-type store. And this is because anything that deals with memory needs to go through the PMMU and the memory may not always be ready especially when you add in paging logic. So just to foreshadow what we might be working on I've added those little uh, flows in the state. So over to the left we have the S-type instructions and you can see that it will consist of up to four clock cycles. We have the fetch one, decode two, S-type store and then memory access. That's four. But it could also be more if the memory isn't ready. So it could it's really four plus. We go to the next one. We have the I-type load and this one's five plus. Then we have the R-type, the B-type for branching, R-type for registers, I-type ALU for doing arithmetic using a medium. We have the J-type for jumping unconditionally. We have the J-type with register for jumping uh, with a return and then finally we have the U-type instructions which can have two different flow paths. If it's an AUIP, AUIPC it can go straight to the store U instruction. Otherwise it's a load which will go through the U-type and then to the last state. That's all of the instructions. If you look below I've listed each one of the instructions that the particular branch supports. JLR for J types, JAL for J type JAL, and we have the I type ALU, the branching, the add, and the loads, and then the stores. This is the diagram as it sits. I don't think it's going to change anything after that, so it should be fairly stable. Everything in pink is describing what has happened, what side effects occurred after the clock cycle. So if we come up here to the reset, we know that when the reset happens, the PC gets a reset vector. And that happens, we, turn, we enable memory read, we then move to the next state, we do a PC load, we set the source, and then a clock occurs, and now the PC has the first instruction address. And this entire diagram is labeled all over the place with pinks. They indicate what's happening after the clock cycle. So there you go, we have a state diagram for the RV32i multi-cycle single core processor. Once I get to the point where I can synthesize the core and execute instructions, we'll be ready for the next episode, barring any roadblocks to everyday life. I mean, that's just the way it is, right? So please be patient and on the lookout for the first episode, and I'll see you there. And again, thank you for subscribing. It is most appreciated. So until next time, peace.